My name is Travis Dupriest. I own QualitySoccerParts.com and Mossy Creek Soccer. Well, what I'd like to do today is do a how-to video on the installation of a male and female OEM style bullet connector onto 18 gauge wire, which is one of the more common wire sizes on your ATV and four-wheeler. What I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize both a commercial style or professional style crimping tool to crimp the terminals on, uh, an economy style crimping tool, and also show you some of the things you need to look for to um, ensure that you get a good high quality OEM style connection when you do a modification to your motorcycle or repair. Well, it's time to get started. One of the first things I want to show you are the terminals that we're going to be using to put on the wire today. This is a B1 male terminal. This is the insulator that belongs to a male terminal, which is a B3 insulator. If you'll notice, there's a little bit of difference between this style terminal and what you get at the auto parts store. The main thing is you have an area here which this portion has two wings on it, two ears that actually crimp into and around your wire versus a solid that just crimps over the wire on a automotive style connector. This is a crimp section with two wings that also this will crimp onto the insulation portion of your wire. One thing you want to make sure you do, and I'll show another picture of this later before I crimp, is that you want this portion to only crimp into insulation, not wire. This portion to only crimp into wire. And try not to have very much wire protruding into the end of your terminal. One of the main reasons for that is it's a, it's a bad habit to get into because some of your other connectors, if you have much wire protruding past these wings, then it will not allow your terminals to actually lock into the connectors that they belong to. Now, it's not quite as necessary on the bullet connectors that we're using today. And let me show you the female bullet connector. This connector is a B2 series connector, and the insulator for this one is a B4. One thing that you want to look for, that the connectors that, I'm, that I carry at QualitySoccerParts.com, are actually a Japanese made connector. One thing you have to watch out for for your lower quality or extremely inexpensive connectors is this portion right here of your female connector. This actually needs a certain amount of spring tension in it and I've noticed some of the inferior bullet connectors out there they may almost look the same but they actually lose their spring tension in this region uh, during the heat and heat cycles of electricity running through them and you'll begin to get connection faults uh, later on. I've had connection faults go on in just a few cycles. Um, some of them, the, the lesser expensive ones, if you plug them and unplug them just once or twice, then the spring tension in this region is no longer effective and you'll get a poor connection. So that's the reason that, that the connectors I carry, uh, they're Japanese made and I will not carry any other style connectors anymore. It looks real similar to an automotive style terminal tool, but it absolutely does a much better job. If you try to use a automotive style terminal tool on these uh, B style OEM type connectors, you will not be satisfied with the results uh, of your connection. All right, we're looking at the uh, female terminal and we're also looking at one of the 18 gauge wires that we're gonna install on the terminal. What I'm gonna do is if you just hold your terminal over, you'll see the two wings. The front two wings, again, are gonna be for your wire. The back two are gonna be into the insulation. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and cut those off to the proper length. Now I have my wires and the wire strippers. I'm going to go ahead and strip the wire off and get it ready to put onto the connector. You'll take your cover, your terminal cover, and you'll place it onto your wire. 
If possible, I usually try to do that before I strip the wire if there's room. If not, then I have to do it afterwards. If you notice, there was a strand that was out of place. I take the strands and I roll them around to get them straight again. If you'll notice, you can see the M portion of my pliers, my crimper tool, is on the top part of the terminal. That'll fold the two wings over onto the wire. I insert the wire. I'll insert the wire into the terminal. All right, I made my first crimp using the largest M portion of my tool. This crimp is not a solid crimp yet. Uh, it's not even holding the terminal in hardly. You can notice I can actually still slip it a little bit back and forth. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take my crimper tool. So this is a size smaller than I had just used. Okay, I'm going to take that one, bring it into the tool. I'm going to crimp it nice and solid. Sometimes the, the terminal will hang slightly in your tool with a little resistance at this point. That is usually a good sign that you've gotten it tight enough. Now, if you'll notice, I can pull back and forth and I have a good bond between the terminal and the wire where it is folded in. The reason that this is so much stronger than your automotive style connectors that you get at a department store is the these two rolls as they roll into the wire create two groups and pinches the two groups all together and that does a couple of things you get a better uh, continuity through your wires and also doesn't crease it the same way that a uh, automotive terminal does when you when you actually use those it just puts pressure in one spot across the wires and actually creates a, an area in the wires that that get weaker now that you know that we have a good solid connector, which I can show you here, a good solid connection, we'll go ahead and take our tool again, and now I want to crimp the, this set of wings right here need to be crimped into the insulation. Now the goal is to actually just crimp the wire, or, or I'm sorry, crimp the wings into the, to the wire insulation, trying not to split the insulation, uh, but, but crimp it as tight as you can without doing that. And what that allows you to do, and one of the reasons that it provides so much strength, is that, that when you pull the connectors back and forth apart, you actually get a chance to pull on the connector also, or I'm sorry, on the insulation and the wire, unlike uh, your lesser expensive uh, automotive style connectors. When you pull on those, you're pulling directly on the wire only to try to separate your bullets. So let me go ahead and crimp that on. I usually use the, the large area on these that does not have the wings to get it started in the right direction. And I pull it back off, go back to my largest wing, I take it, I go ahead and crimp it down. I go ahead and crimp it down. and then I check my terminal. If you notice, I have a good solid connection there. It does not look like that I split the insulation. And this is a very solid, very strong connection. As you take your insulation, your B4 insulator, and you, sl and you slip it onto to cover up terminal in. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put together the uh, male terminal, the uh, B1 connector and the uh, B3 insulator. So we'll take our wire strippers, we'll strip the wire to the appropriate length. We'll take those off. Again, you can put the insulator on before, after. It's actually a lot of times easier if you do it uh, before you cut, if you have room. If not, doing it after is fine. Just make sure when you do it that you roll the uh, end of your wire. 
Now this time we're going to go ahead and use the economy tool. Tell you is I want the wire placed in about this region right here whenever I make the crimp. If it's if both get just the wire, both left and right wings, it won't be as strong. And also, if you have your insulation too far into it, like I just took it there, then you will not get a good connection. So you need the, the division to be right in between the two wings. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my tool and make my initial crimp. squeeze it into the insulation. All right. I'm inspecting it. Now this tool typically um, it does give satisfactory results. There's no doubt it, it gives pretty pretty decent uh, crimps. Uh, it still doesn't do quite as good a job as, as the uh, professional grade tool, but you're also looking at about a $60 difference between the two tools. Uh, for the money, I think the economy tool that I just used is going to be the best bet for most homeowners and uh, most hobbyists. Now move the insulator onto the bullet. I usually take just a little bit of dielectric grease, put on the male end. Uh, dielectric grease will help to prevent corrosion, to, to allow you to have a, a longer lasting connection. When you put the two together, these two factory style terminals, they make a very strong connection. Hopefully this how-to video will help you have a better understanding on how to properly repair or modify your wiring harness using a uh, OEM style bullet connector. If you need any connectors or any wiring supplies, go to qualitysocketparts.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks a lot.